this video I want to show you how to make the perfect steak tartare and the first thing I need to let you know is that I will tell you a little bit about the history of that dish but get some really fresh meat. It needs to be fresh meat. It can't be anything dry aged, it can't be anything vagu that would be too fat that would clog up your taste buds. It needs to be very very fresh meat because you want to have that fresh meat very well. Then you have to remove all the sinuids like you see that here on my video. The next thing you have to do is you have to chop it by hand. You cannot go off and put the steak that tears through your mincer blades. You know why? Because mincer blades are usually made out of steel or iron. So it makes gives the meat a metallic flavor. It makes the basically it makes the meat oxidize very quickly and then the meat gets a sort of a really metallic iron flavor. You don't want that. So get some really lean meat, use some eye fillet, use some porterhouse, use some rump, anything that's lean. You don't want anything fat, you don't want to have too much scenery. Then just cut the meat up. The obvious choice is an eye fillet because it just chops up so nicely like you see in my video here. And then you cut your knife with a really sharp knife. You cut the meat quite fine and you sort of just keep chopping it. Now the main thing with the beef that here is that you have to mix it together just before you serve it. If you mix in all the other ingredients, and I will show you today how to do it in the traditional way, how it was always done, how it's properly done, and then you mix it together, and then you can actually chop up all the ingredients and put them in a the fridge and then just arrange them at the end. So next thing is a little bit of olive oil to add a bit of creaminess, and then some a touch of tomato sauce. I know that's not very usual, but the tomato sauce is a bit sweet and quite sharp, but that will just take a bit the edge of that raw meat flavor, which some people don't like. It puts some people off. I did that so many times. I give people beef to tear with a touch of tomato sauce, so just that little that you don't taste it and you suddenly, you know, they don't even complain about it because it tastes really good. It takes the edge of the raw meat, so if that makes sense. So then just sort of put a little lobe of, of meat on the plate and that's how I got it served in France many, many years ago. And I'll tell you a little bit about the history. So beef that here originally, this is two stories. First, first story is the one which says that it comes from the Tatari, which is a horse riding tribe in, in the, the Russia, in the east of Russia. And what they used to do, they also ate their horses. So they took the meat, you know, they put it under the saddle of the horse and then they kept riding around a bit and then took the saddle off, got their big swords out and scraped the meat off and put it on the bread and ate it. Now that was beef that here. It then obviously got refined with different flavors, like I put some gherkins on there. And then what happened next is that that dish became very popular in Russia and then it came over to the port of Hamburg with Russian sailors and it got into the hands of a German chef and he thought that just cannot be right that you serve raw meat. So he thought it's a meatloaf. So he cooked it up. Now that served that to American sailors. They loved that idea. And then that traveled into the US and it became the hamburger after the port of the town of Hamburg. So that's the story. There's actually quite a good relation between a beef that there and a hamburger. Then the French, they sort of thought in the 20th century they invented the beef that here and when they sort of cracked that down a bit that story it says that it came over from America because the American cowboys used to do the same thing they put their meat under the saddle and they'd ride all day long and they tenderized the meat and through that it basically came into, into France and the French sort of perfected it. You see like the French served originally beef tartare with a tartare sauce and you still get that. And if you look at the tartare sauce, it has a lot of those flavors which I put on the plate here. Parsley, capers, gherkins, shallots, a bit of garlic and obviously the mayonnaise sauce. So traditionally beef tartare in France was served raw meat is a tartare sauce and then you just mix that together and here we go there's the egg yolks another thing that you have in a tartare sauce so it's basically a light mayonnaise um, so traditionally in france it's served as either green salad or chips and like the french you know like with other dishes they claim it is theirs but what they definitely did they did perfect it and beef tartare what you see today here is how it's made in france in most restaurants today and it's an absolutely perfect dish. You only have to be careful, do not go off and make that too early. If you mix those ingredients too early, like you see here, you know the mustard, the 
capers, the anchovies and all of that will heavily oxidize and if that heavily oxidizes makes the beef that they are quite bitter, quite sharp and quite unpleasant to eat. So you only have around 10 to 15 minutes before the beef tartare starts to oxidize. So that's why we just mix it together like they do in France and bistros. They mix it together in front of the guest. So you have the whole story here now. I hope you enjoyed my recipe. I hope you enjoyed my video. So please subscribe to my channel and I look forward to seeing it in one of my other videos. And there's a beef tartare, a perfect summer dish. Serve it with some baguette, some salad or some chips.